virtual reality is here. It's not somewhere in the distance down the road. It's here right now. There are lots of questions. What does it do? How does it do it? What's the difference between this headset and that headset? And most importantly, where is it going? Let's start with the company that helped bring on this new age of VR, or at least the most recent attempt to do so. Ahem. I'm talking, of course, about Oculus, started by Palmer Lucky. A few years ago, Palmer started posting his process on online forums, and he got the attention of John Carmack, who helped develop groundbreaking first-person shooter games like Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. Carmack helped Lucky with his research and eventually joined Oculus as the chief technology officer. They created the most popular and well-known HMD, the Oculus Rift. The first dev kit, the DK1, showed much promise. But it was the second version, the DK2, that offered an optical camera that could sense where in the game your head was, meaning you could move up and down and side to side within the game. Unlike some other companies, Oculus hasn't released any consumer versions of their HMD at this time. But they did announce that you could finally pick up their CV-1 in the first quarter of 2016. At the moment, there's only a handful of HMDs that are available for consumers, and those are, for the most part, powered by smartphones. There's the Samsung Gear VR series, which Samsung released last year to work only with its Note 4 smartphone, and recently they added a model that works with the Galaxy S6. They also pretty much broke the VR function of the Note 4 with the newest Android OS update, but we don't have time to go into how they shit the bed on that one. With that said, the Samsung Gear VR, when it's functional, is a big step in the consumer version of VR. And Samsung has definitely been advertising it as a consumer-ready device and platform. The other more DIY approach to VR is known as Google Cardboard, which uses your smartphone as the brain of the HMD, similar to that of a Samsung Gear VR. Cardboard started out as an afterthought for Google last year. It was initially, hey, this is kind of cool, we should make some stuff for it in our spare time, but the numbers of people using Cardboard skyrocketed. And since then, they've started taking VR and augmented reality very serious. In March, they launched their 360 YouTube player, and last week they announced its compatibility with Apple devices. And they premiered Google Jump, which aims to make content for VR and AR users, utilizing their 16 camera rig that they designed with GoPro. And on a quick side note, GoPro recently bought the company Color that specializes in stitching 360 videos and photography. So you can expect some GoPro 360 cameras in the near future. Now, a lot of misinformed people see that the Samsung Gear VR and the Cardboard both run off smartphones, so they deduct, with no research into the matter, that they are the exact same thing, and one is just a pricey plastic version of the other. This statement is false. Besides the obvious functions that the Gear VR offers, the Note 4 was crafted by Samsung along with Oculus. Lots of gamers want to know, can I play my PC games using a Google Cardboard or a Samsung Gear VR? The answer to that, for the most part, is no. But the Cardboard and Gear VR stores do have a decent selection of indie games to play. You can, however, play a lot of popular and current video games using an Oculus DK2, and that is because it's a standalone device that doesn't run off a smartphone. It plugs into your PC using USB and HDMI cables, and is recognized as another external monitor. The best way to describe it is that VR apps played off your computer are like arcade cabinet versions with amazing quality and graphics. The mobile version you play via your phone is like a Super Nintendo cartridge of the same game. Now, is that everything the world of VR has to offer? Nope. Not by a long shot. Next week, this video will already be dated. And in a year, it'll be like watching a commercial for the first iMac. So let's talk about what's coming. Project Morpheus is the first HMD being made specifically for gaming consoles, specifically the PlayStation 4. Expect seeing it in 2016. Valve, who initially worked with Oculus researching the DK2, has teamed with HTC to bring you the Vive, which I had the pleasure of beta testing at the VR Jam here in Austin a few months ago. That's me, being a kaiju, knocking down some buildings. Instead of using an optical camera seated in front of you like Oculus does, the Vive uses lighthouses that scan a 15 by 15 foot space, letting you move around inside the game physically without the need of a directional pad. 
That technology, along with its VR controllers, make for quite an impressive experience. The Vive comes out to consumers in November of this year, but the Vive dev kits have already started shipping to developers just last week. If you haven't heard about Microsoft's HoloLens by now, it's definitely worth checking out. What's crazy about the HoloLens, in addition to the fact that Microsoft kept under wraps for so many years, is that this device is also shipping to consumers by the end of this year, and they just announced plans to create video game content to work specifically with the Xbox One. Now in this video, we focused on the more mainstream devices and releases, but there are a slew of companies coming out with their own HMDs and accessories. Lenovo is releasing a device similar to the Gear VR that works with their own phones. Fove is a new HMD company that not only offers head tracking, but actually tracks the eye movement of the viewer. Apple is keeping quiet at the moment, but they've secretly been beefing up their VR department. And Oculus just acquired Surreal Vision. And the craziest thing about these videos from Surreal Vision that you're watching right now is that some of them are four years old. Whether it's the awesome real-life game environments that The Void and Salt Lake City are working on, or the upcoming 360 short film Help that Google is making with director Justin Lin, the future of VR and 360 is not only going to be exciting, it's going to change the way we make and watch content forever. <laughs>